There we go. Welcome to Midweek Morning Manna on Wednesday morning. We're glad you're here. Hope you've had a good morning already. It's a joy to have you here with us this morning and a joy to have you with us tonight as we uh, open up the Word of God. We're going to sing a little bit. I'm going to pray a little bit. And we're going to preach a little bit, all right? So with just a little bit, all right? I promise I won't last four or five hours, okay? That'd be all right. How about that? All right, let's do it. Let's sing. All right, there's power in the blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing it out. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, power. Wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, let's put some power. There is power, 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 wonder-working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, 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 wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Weren't you challenged to get three in there the other day? Yes, sir. We got four. We got there, four. You go. there you go. I've done as many as 16. I've done as many as 16. Over, overachiever. <laughs> Four, oh. three's nothing. Piece of cake. <laughs> Piece of cake. Oh. What's wrong? All right. All right, let's sing about a victory in Jesus. Everybody sing now. I heard an old, old story How my Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and he caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me a victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. 
I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Aren't you glad for victory? Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you guys for being here this morning. We have a, it's a joy to be here. Remember last week I told you that we were going to uh, give some money to the NEMA girls to support uh, families. At $25 a month, we can support a family uh, for a whole month. And so uh, uh, if you give that today, just make sure, just drop it back there in that bucket. It'll be fine. Uh, whatever you give, we're going to give. We're going to be from our group right here. And uh, I got some money last, uh, last week. I got some money today already. But uh, we're going to minister to some families in, in Africa uh, by feeding their family for a month. That'll buy them some beans and some posho, and it'll buy them some corn and things like that that they can minister to. And they, that's what they have for lunch, breakfast, and dinner all the time. So, so it'll be good, and they'll be tickled to death to get it. So uh, as you do that, thank you. And, and I appreciate how you guys have been giving and how faithful that you are to, to be here. And uh, well, wasn't Sunday a good day? It was just a good day. And we appreciate our mothers and, and got to see a lot of people. We had over 325 here Sunday, so it was a great day. Uh, had 60-something in the first service, 260-something in the second service. So it was a great day and uh, just a sweet spirit. And, and so we're going to be talking about uh, possibly in the days to come of having two services on Sunday. and One just like this right here. We'll just sing like we do and have a good time and enjoy. And, and, uh, but, but it's just good to be back together again, everybody. It's just good. And a lot of families hurting today. A lot of families having some needs today. Miss Jerry Gann is in the hospital uh, she's having some tests run today. Miss Polly was sharing with me, and then uh, several of her family, her son-in-law, uh, Randy, is having some heart problems and some difficulties, and, and then her grandchildren and Bree and Eli are having some tests run on them and possible surgery, and, and Miss Shelley Val had a hip replaced on Monday. Mr. Charlie Hampton's still in the hospital. Uh, just a lot of folks that have a lot of needs, so let's just go to the Lord in prayer right now. Let's ask him to be with us. Father, we love you. And we know you love us. And Father, I, I come to you today co confessing that I'm a sinner and I'm just uh, saved by grace. The only way I'm getting into heaven is by your grace. Lord, it's not on my merits. It's not on my behavior because I'm, I sometimes don't behave very well. So, Lord, I'm praying you forgive me of my sins. Thank you for the men and women that have gathered here today to just to sing and to worship you and to open up the Word of God. For those that are on our hearts today, we pray for all of those, for the families that have lost loved ones, for Amy Gardner's family that will bury her this afternoon. I pray for Tim and his family. I ask you to bless them. I pray for the W. Smith family whose uh, funeral will be this weekend. And I pray for others who need Christ and, and Father, who, who are lost and undone. Thank you for how you've blessed and thank you for how you've taken care of us. Lord, continue to guide, lead, and direct us in the days ahead. We're so looking forward to, to a great summer and uh, raising the bar at First Baptist Church. And, Lord, that's our hope and our aim to connect people with Jesus. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to sing. All right, lean on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, yes, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. 
Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how right the path rose from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, yes, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, yes, leaning, leaning on the everlasting heart. Oh, what have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting Leaning, yes, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, yes, leaning, leaning on the everlasting heart. We did this next song at a senior adult rally last Thursday. And it was about a group this size. And so this is our Cowboy Church song when the roll's called up yonder. And Kim kind of looked at me, and I kind of looked at him, and I thought, he's fixing to scream. And so we got done, and we got done to the chorus to where we do the woo. And uh, I think a few of them lost a couple years off their life. But uh, hey, they one didn't. old boy jumped. I mean, oh, he scared him to death. That's right. So I went ahead and played Invitation, and, and we called it a day. But let's <laughs> sing this together. <laughs> When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound in time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and bright and fair. When the saints of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the called up yonder Woo! when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there oh don't be shy when the roll when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, oh, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, woo! When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the Master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all His wondrous love and care. And when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder. Woo! When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Hey, give the Lord a hand. That's good singing, y'all. That's pretty good. Last Monday night, we had an executive board meeting at the Cowboy Church, and Cole and I uh, started singing, and Brother Dave White, he's our moderator, our associational missionary, and then Tracy Archibald, they all, for, all four of us got together, and uh, they, one of them was singing bass, and one of them was singing harmony, and me and Cole were just singing, all right? We just sang it. And uh, we had the best time, and I thought, boy, this is what it sounds like saying in a band, don't it? Hey, I thought the same thing. We hadn't had a chance to talk about it that. It sounded really good, and I thought, man, we need to get them old boys to come up here and help us sing. So one Wednesday morning, if I can get them to come, we'll have them to come and visit with us and join us in singing. And uh, you can hear what a real live band sounds like, all right? That'd be good. All right. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear fall 
holding on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their sing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be full. But he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am. joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known tempted and tried we're all made to walk why it should be thus all the day long while there are others living about us never molested though in the wrong father Understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it. Oh, my empire. When death has come and taken our love. It leaves our home so lonely and dreary. Living so we wonder why others prosper. Living so wicked year after year. Father. Father alone will under
stand wide. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus, When he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Thank you for this morning, and God, we just thank you for the opportunity to meet here. Um, as, as we were sharing Monday night, this is one of our favorite nights of the, of the week, favorite days of the week that we get to do this. And God, we just thank you for that opportunity, God. I pray for Brother Kim as he comes this morning, God, that you would speak through him. And God, I just pray that you would use him in a mighty way. Speak to our hearts and move this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you've had a good week so far. Uh, this is kind of when we start getting busy. Uh, May is a busy, busy month. Uh, uh, Cole and I backed up uh, last Wednesday after we left here, after you left here. And uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, it was tremendously busy. We've had busy times. And so Monday was also that away. Tuesday was we mowed all day yesterday in between the rain and got done about 4.30, just about time for it to start raining again. And uh, was happy about that. Uh, I, my brother-in-law was here over the weekend, and, and he said, man, you're going to have to fire that yard boy at Grandma Bonnie's house. And I'm telling you, I said, I know. I said, he's in trouble. And her yard was high, and I, if I got that dude rolled down yesterday. So it's good, uh, but we're glad you're here. We've got some exciting things coming up, some good things are going to be happening. Uh, and the day's coming out week after next. We're planning a church picnic right after church on the, in the, at the 10 o'clock service when we finish there. And we'll, from 11.30 to 1.30, we're going to uh, have hamburgers and hot dogs and games for our kids and just time of fellowship. And bring your lawn chair. We're going to sit outside and enjoy a good time of fellowship with each other and just kind of looking forward. And we've got a great uh, lineup this summer coming up. We're excited about that. We're going to see God do some neat things, and so we, we're grateful to you. Let me remember Miss Tweet Thrasher's family. Tweet's funeral will be tomorrow, uh, so let's remember them in our prayers. And I know Miss Maxine and her were very, very big buddies, and so we want to continue to pray for, for them and ask the Lord to be with them in a really special way. Take your Bibles this morning. Turn to Psalms 119. Psalms 119, one of my favorite chapters in all the Bible. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. I believe it has 176 verses. Uh, let me make sure of that so that I won't tell you wrong. Uh, but it does. It has 176 verses. And every verse but two speak about the Word of God. Every verse in there. 174 verses bring us to the Word of God. Talks to us about the Word of God. And so it's always, a, I, when I share that, I've, I've said that before, and somebody will text me off of Facebook, Brother Kim, I found them. I found what two they are. So you go look for them and see if you can find what two verses that they are that doesn't mention something about the Word of God and uh, the statutes of God. And uh, uh, so, so it's very, very interesting passage of Scripture. And uh, uh, the writer here gives us some wonderful things. He talks about the excellences of the Word of God. Now, guys, I don't know about you, but I base my whole life on this book right here. Everything that I am based on this book right here. I mean, uh, it's not on, I'm a Southern Baptist from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and I, but that's not going to get me into heaven, all right? Being a Baptist is not going to get you there. Methodist, Pentecost, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, I think a place you worship is a local place of worship where we come together to, to fellowship with one another. I think that's very important. The local church is very important. I, I never will forget one year, 
uh, when after I moved here, uh, this dear lady was sharing with me about um, uh, who all, what all ministries she supported. And she was telling me all these different ministries that supported. And, and I said, man, that's great. I said, but when you go to the hospital next time, do you think that so-and-so is going to come see you? Why, no. I said, do you think so-and-so is going to come see you? Why, no. I says, you need to support your local church. I said, because when you get sick, guess who's going to be there? If I know it, I'll be there. And I want you to know that's how very important I think the church is, the body of Christ is, to minister, not just me, but all of us are ministers of the gospel. All of us are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us have a job being misfreed and just scratching our head wondering when y'all going to get busy, all right? That's kind of what we've all wondered about. When's folks going to get busy for Jesus? And so let's do that and let's think of it. We take this word right here. And you know as well as I do, from feeding families uh, uh, during uh, this time, during the pandemic, from ministering to them as we've done with Miss Monta's family last week, and you ladies done a marvelous job. They bragged on the food that we had here, to serving people here in our community. That's what we want to do. That's our aim and our goal. And I believe it starts with the foundation on the Word of God, okay? The excellencies of the Word of God. Let's read Psalms 119. Let's look at verse number 1. And if you'll notice, if your Bible has a word called Aleph, do you see that? That is the Hebrew alphabet. Anywhere you see Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, uh, Hav, Wa, that's the Hebrew alphabet, and every one of the Hebrew alphabets has a section here. And so just knowing that, that, that God, remember he says, I'm the beginning and the last. I'm the first and the last. I'm the beginning and the end. And so when we think about that, God is everything. And so, so the Word of God wraps all that up and tells us you know, inside this passage of Scripture, Psalms 119, gives us a tremendous view into the heart of God, okay? It says, blessed, and I love that word, it means happy. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. There it is, the law of the Lord. So our job is to walk with the Lord. Uh, uh, I think it's number 99, trust and obey. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. You see, guys, when we walk in this word, when we do our best to walk in it. Now, I don't know about you, but do y'all ever get off the path sometimes? Do y'all ever get off the path? And, and you know you know better, I know better, we know better, but you know what? The path is straight, it's, it's showing where we're supposed to go, and you know what, doggone it, if I don't get off of it, just because I can, I guess. I don't know why, but I do. And, and so, so when we think about this, the, the Bible here says in verse number 1 of a hundred, and 175 more verses that speak to this, he said, blessed are the undefiled. That's those who have a right standing with God. He says, who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, guys, the only way I can have a right standing with God is to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Can I have an amen? That's the only way because I, on Kim's merits, like I said, I get off the beaten path. I'm supposed to be walking here, and I'm way over here. I'm supposed to be walking this way, and I'm way over here. I get off the beaten path. I get off the right way. The Bible says, few there be that find it. Broad is the way. Uh, that leads to destruction but straight and narrow is the way that leads to life and so so we have to remember we've got to walk that straight and narrow jesus spoke about that in in the book of matthew to tell us about our walk with the lord in the sermon on the mount but he says blessed aleph says uh, the the first letter of the hebrew alphabet aleph says blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the lord verse 2 he said, blessed are those who keep his testimonies. There it is in verse number two, who keep the word of God. The word testimony there brings us to, back to the word of God, who seek him with their whole heart. You see, uh, God doesn't want part of us. He don't want a part of you on Sunday and give you that part for a couple of hours on Sunday, and then you're different uh, the rest of the 166 hours left in the rest of the week, okay? He wants you all the time. Can I have an amen? amen? He wants you all the time, and that's what God wants. So when we take his word and we, we spend that time in his word, we know. He says, because who, who, they seek him with all their hearts, he said, they also do no iniquity. We do our best to keep our nose clean, all right? But again, every once in a while, we veer off the path, don't we? Every once in a while, we say something 
we do something, we see something, we, we go somewhere, we do some things that we know, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry, Lord. I, again, it's the ABCs. Admit, I've done wrong. Believe that Jesus can forgive me, and I believe in him that he is a great forgiver. I'm glad he's a great forgiver. Amen? And then confess that. Agree with God, Lord, I've done wrong. Don't try to man be pamby around it. Don't try to say, I didn't know. You know, I don't think, the Bible says we're going to give an, an account for every idle word. Now, folks, I talk a lot and I talk fast. So, man, God's got a fast recorder up there for old Kim Bridges, okay? Uh, I'm telling you. So, so just think about that. Our walk in our ways and 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 we do our best to stay off the back the path of iniquity he said they walk in his ways they who also do no iniquity walk in his ways verse 4 you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently commandment the word of god you know uh we find in the book of exodus the original 10 genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy it's called the pentateuch that the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, are attributed to Moses for writing them. The first five books of the Bible are what the Hebrew children have hung on to for all these years. That was, the con that was their constitution, if you will, that goes with them forever. And folks, when Jesus came into them, they, he came and did a new covenant with them. And that new covenant, and, and many of them rejected that new covenant, but that let me and you get in on the right stuff. Amen? And so his, the cup of, his, of, the, of the New Testament, his new, uh, the new covenant for me and you, was we believe in the death, the burial, the resurrection, the gospel for Jesus Christ, okay? So he tells us here, we kept your precepts. Verse 5, oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. There it is. Lord, may my ways be what they ought to be so that I can keep this word. I love Psalms 119, just a little few verses. I believe it's 105. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not, what? Sin against God. We need to keep that in mind. Keep that lined up that we do that. He says, verse 6, then I would not be ashamed. There's when we sin, when we get off the beaten path, shame comes on us. If you'll remember back in, the, in Genesis, when Adam and Eve, who had walked with God in the cool of the day on the afternoons, when they came, when God came looking for them after they had sinned, there was shame. There was guilt. There was remorse. There was sorrow. They looked at each other, and they never looked at each other like that before. They never saw each other. They had no clothes on, but at that, at that moment, they never, ever looked at each other. There was, a sh there was shame, and, and there was embarrassment. You see, what I, I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. All God said to them was, the day you eat this fruit, you're going to what? You're going to die, okay? So don't eat it. I mean, they didn't commit murder. All they did was disobey God. And so, so that's what me and you do as believers in Christ. We disobey God. So, so when we take a look here, let's not be ashamed when we look into the commandments, folks, because right here is the words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words words of life okay sing them over again to me wonderful words of life look at verse number uh, seven he says i will praise you i will give you glory lord with your uprightness of heart when i learn your righteous judgments the righteousness of god when we learn what god's word says when you learn it and guys it doesn't go in like this okay everybody look here it doesn't go in when you put the bible on top of your head it goes in when you spend time in it it goes in when you know. You know, the, the problem that I have, as, as the Bible says, he who knoweth to do good and knoweth it not, to him it is what? Sin. I know what to do. You know what to do. We know what to do. And when we don't do it, we sin. Sins of omission are just as bad as sins as commission. Sins that we don't know we're doing are just as bad as sins that we know we're doing, okay? So, so when we think about that, we give God praise with his uprightness in his heart when we learn the righteousness and his righteous judgment. They're always going to be true. They're always going to be fair. They're always going to be what God calls for. He says in verse, one, uh, verse number 8, he says, I will keep your statutes. I will keep your law. I will keep your word. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Don't you feel like sometimes after we've messed up that we're all by ourselves? I do. 
I'm thinking, Lord, I'm the only fellow in town that's done that. I'm sorry. I'm the only fellow in town that said that. I feel alone. And we feel by ourselves. We feel like we're alone. But you know, I love what the Bible said. I remember uh, long ago there was a pastor here when I was just leaving, uh, uh, just beginning my ministry. Lana and I had just gotten married. And the pastor had said to us, Brother George Fink, he said, he said, you're never alone. He said, you may be lonely, but you're never going to be alone. Because Jesus is the majority it doesn't matter if we're if there's 500 people in a room or or minus seven okay jesus is always with us and i love what he was he's not going to leave you the word of god says i will never leave you nor yet forsake you so keep that in mind okay then he says in verse number nine how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to his what word how can we how can we cleanse ourselves that's why in the New Testament, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I believe he talks about a young man. Of course, most of us in here, we wouldn't even consider a young man except Cole. He's the youngest man here today. Well, I, I think in the back back there, we've got Luke Kidd in the corner back there in the office. He's the youngest one here today. But we all realize, how can we cleanse ourselves? How can a young man, after he gets dirty, cleanse his way? He says, you're by heeding, by taking heed according to the Word of God. So again, the Word of God. It's a lamp into our feet. It's a light into our path. In the monastery many years ago, when there wasn't electricity, the, uh, the monks would wear shoes that you could put candles on the very end of their toes. And when they walked up in the, to the monastery at night, they would hold a candle here and they would have a candle on, the, on their shoes and they would walk them right up to bed and get them there safely. Because, folks, we need to, to, to chart through this old world safely, do we not? Because it's a dark, dark world. The Bible says if our gospel is hid it's hid to those that are lost and folks we need to be the shining light we don't take a candle and hide it under a bushel do we we sing to our boys and girls that song I, I, i'm not going to hide it under a bushel no i'm going to let it shine so that's our job how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed understanding heeding the word of god he says in verse number 10 and in verse 10 when he gives us verse 9 i, I wanted to share with you it says beth that's the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Beth, Aleph, Beth, Aleph, Beth. And he says, how can a young man cleanse his way? He says, by taking heed according to your word. Verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. You see, there's a reason that we're not close to God. Because we're not seeking him with our whole heart. We're halfway doing things okay we're halfway trying to, you know we, we, we're not really giving all of our all our allegiance you mean you mean lord you want me to do that lord you want me to do that I, lord i i don't want to forgive them you want me to forgive them lord i i don't want to apologize to that person lord i don't want to do that then what happens is we're not seeking him with our whole heart when we're ready to listen with our whole heart when we're ready to listen with our with everything here not just these ears that god gives us these discs on the side of our head so that we might sound might go in and we might be able to understand and 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 realize what it's saying on the inside but what it is it comes right here it's been so many times I, i'd argue with god i'd sit there no i don't want to do that that's what i want you to do that's, that's what i'm telling you to do but i don't want to do that you know i never will forget when i was a kid growing up um, someone said something about making your kids do something. I said, yeah, I've, I've had my share of those making things to do. I had to do make my kids do this, make my kids do that. But I remember um, mom would give us some medicine. And uh, me or Kelly, either one, we, sometimes we didn't like it. Well, she'd give us a little bit of cream emotion. Cream emotion with just candy, syrup, liquid syrup, okay? It tasted pretty good, but she put all that other stuff in there. You know what? I didn't like it by the time that when that little bitty old teaspoon was right here and is out here, you know, it was fine. But as long as it got right here, it got about that big to go in my mouth. You know, that, that medicine for our souls. Folks, that's what God wants us to understand. It's going to go, it looks fine out there and fell, especially as long as Granny, it's, God's talking to Granny and not talking to Kim, okay? As long as he's doing that to her, I'm okay. As long as he's talking to Frieda and not Brother Kim, as long as he's talking to Linda and I'm not, but not me. But when he talks to me, guess what? That old spoon of medicine and God's spoon gets this big around. And because it goes in, and it's not fun sometimes. So 
with my whole heart. I have sought after you, Lord. Oh, let me not wonder. What do sheep do? Sheep wonder. They have their head down, don't they? All they can look at is the grass. And sheep wander away. And when they wander away, that's why the shepherd has to go up to them with the shepherd's staff and say, come on, get back over here. Their voice, he hears their voice. And they come back to where they're supposed to be. Because there's danger out there. And God being the good shepherd, the great shepherd, he wants us to have him <coughs> Excuse me, with our whole heart. Verse 11, thy word, look here, have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. There it is. Uh, Psalms 119.11, and I'll circle that in your Bible. It's a great passage of Scripture that God gives us wisdom on, and he tells us these things. Your word, here, this word, God's word, have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now, folks, that's where we need to learn it. That's where we need to understand it. I've got a little girl, a teenage little girl, after church on Sunday morning. Her mother has asked, Brother Kim, would you, would you be here so my daughter can, can quote you these verses? I said, sure. Sunday morning she quoted me Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 2 and 3, or 3 and 4, something like that. I don't remember which one it was, but in Philippians chapter 2, I said, do you know what that means? And she shook her head. She said, no, sir, I don't. And so I began to explain to her and had the opportunity to explain to her what those passages of Scripture mean to a child of God, to those of us who are believers in Christ. Folks, you got to believe. Say amen. you got to believe. you got to believe. And so, so what a wonderful thing. So hide God's Word. Write it down. And, and realize how valuable that that Word is, how valuable to us it is. Verse 12, he tells us here, he said, Blessed are you there that word is blessed again happy are you O lord teach me your statutes teach me your word teach me what you want me to know teach me your commandments teach me now guys that's one of the things that i've found that as i grow older when i was in college and high school and and in my formative years of, of learning uh, and learning the ABCs and, and how to count to 100 and how to do my multiplication facts and, and how to do all those things that come around, uh, I had a little Greek primer when I was in college and, and uh, I was taking Greek and, 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 and guys, it, and, and it didn't come easy for me. I, I'm telling you, it was a hard language. Hebrew was even harder to try to learn them things and, and I barely passed and I was so happy that I got it over. But I had a little red primer we called it a, uh, the Greek primer, and it was a little red book that Dr. Reeves had given to us, and he said, this is what I want you to study, and we would study those words, and we'd study those endings, and we'd study what this meant and what that meant, and I just, man, it was hard for me, because I just didn't get it. I barely can speak Arkansas, y'all, much less Greek or Hebrew or Latin or anything else, you know? And so, so when, when I, I hear this, but being teachable is the most important part. Will you be teachable so God can teach you? Because we don't know it all, do we? We don't. We, we, we have to have uh, ears that hear, hearts that are willing to ply, be pliable so that we can understand it. So it's very important that you're teachable, that I'm teachable, so that when we have this word and when God says, this is what I expect out of you, this is what I want you to do, Lord, I don't want to, but I'll do it. Okay? That changes the whole attitude of where we are. Look at verse number 13. He said, with my lips, with my mouth, with my lips, I've declared all the judgments of your mouth, what you have to say. Uh, I, I, I preached a message uh, several months ago, uh, and, and it comes out of the book of 1 Peter. I preached it several times, but, uh, uh, and, and I shared with our church, and I shared with you uh, out, of, out of 2 Peter, he said in verse chapter 4, he tells us, but the time of the thing of all things are at hand. He said, you need to watch unto prayer. And I've told you, we need to pray like we've never prayed before. We need to preach like we've never preached before. We need to serve like we've never served before. We need to share and love people like we've never loved before. Why? Because the time is at hand. Time is at hand. It's, it's, it's serious, y'all. I mean, the things that's going on over in Israel, the things that's going on here in our own nation, Things that's going on in our world, folks, it's a volatile, it's a, it's, a, it's a volcano waiting to erupt for us. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of your mouth, God. Folks, if God's holy and righteous and pure, he's also a God that one day will expect repayment 
And if you don't trust Jesus and bow your knee in this world, you'll trust Jesus and bow your knee in the later world, and it'll be way too late then. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now, I, we're going to just share a couple more verses. Look at verse 14. He tells us in verse 14, he says, I have rejoiced, there's joy, in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. You see, when we thinking, um, you're thinking about the right things and you have a heart that's right with God, the most important part of life is not about how much money you got in your bank account. The most important part of your life is not if I'm going to be able to pay this bill or get that bill done or do all these other things. It's just that I have rejoiced in this book. That's one of the most satisfying things to the Lord. God, you're going to have to provide for me. God, you're going to have to take care of me. God, you're going to have to, and he will. Uh, my, the Bible says, Paul said, uh, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches which are in Christ Jesus. He, he said he'll do it, Philippians 4, 19. My God will supply. Is he your God? Will he supply? He will if he's your God. Now, he said, I've rejoiced in your testimony as much as in all the riches in the world. Folks, you know, I've heard it said, people have all kind of money, but they don't have all kind of peace. People have all kind of wealth, but they don't have no joy. People have all kind of things. But money can buy you a lot of things, but it can't buy you peace with God. Can I have an Amen. Look what he says in verse 15. Look at this. He says, I will meditate. I will think on. I will pray on. I will listen to your precepts and contemplate your ways. Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to hear what you have to say. And the last verse I want to look at today is, is I will delight myself. In verse 16, in your statutes, I will not forget your word. Now, guys, we have just started to scratch the surface here in psalm 119 it has so much to teach us and direct us and to help us but the first thing we need to have number one is a love for the word of god i love the word of god i love that it teaches me it transforms me it it it, it, it helps me in my temptations it guides me when trials of my life come when all those t things happen in my life i understand that this right here is where i find the greatest peace in all the world. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Lord, we just opened up this precious chapter uh, and, 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 and looked at uh, the beginning of it. Uh, Lord, there's so much uh, that all directs to your word. Lord, it all tells us about who you are. And it, and it, it reveals to us the, the, the mind, the will, the ways, and especially it reminds us of the word of god lord thank you for tonight lord i'm praying for that person that's out there uh tonight that's listened that hasn't made a personal relationship with jesus oh they may be religious they may come to church on sunday they may have a lot of things going on they may have a pocket full of money but lord they don't have peace they don't have joy you see we need as christians to share and show the fruit of the spirit now that's singular the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The Bible says against such there is no law. But if you have love and joy and peace, long-suffering, patience with others. You see, God wants us to take His Word, apply it to our lives, and follow Him down that beaten path. Let's not stray off of it, and I do. I, I did yesterday. I, I, I don't want to today, but I probably, I'm probably going to see something, say something, do something, say something to my wife that I shouldn't say, say something to Cole that I shouldn't say, say something to you that I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, say something that needs Christ that I might turn away from. So, Lord, please guard my mouth. Put a bit in my mouth like you do a horse's bit and, and, and pull me back when I say things that I shouldn't. Lord, so today, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for these precious folks that have come out today to just sing and worship and pray for and then hear some preaching. Lord, we love you. We love your Word. And Lord, if there's somebody out there today, tonight or somebody here that doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus, Lord, that's our, that's our whole aim, that they would believe the gospel, believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Get saved and trust Him. So Lord, tonight, thank you for your word. Be with us now as we sing, and we love you, and be with our church family as we reach out to love, to serve, to preach, 
and to care about our world, to pray like we've never done it before. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's sing. And I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus took out his wallet and paid it all. Jesus paid it all. To him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Man, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being here this morning. What a blessing it is to be able to visit with you, to share with you. I was list sitting here at my table when all of y'all were coming in. Sound like a bunch of cackling hens out there. I'm telling you, just sounded so good for y'all fellowship and investing. What a blessing it is. Thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you. Have a great night. We love you and sure do appreciate you so very much.